Are you ready for the new carry-on crackdown? Find out the changes that could cost you big time on your next flight and how to avoid unexpected fees or even getting kicked off the plane. Welcome back to Park and Post. Today, I will be discussing the carry-on crackdown and how you can prepare for your next flight to avoid unexpected fees or even denied boarding. The crackdown has two key aspects that all travelers, whether flying internationally or domestically, need to understand. The first component of the carry-on crackdown is the heightened enforcement of the two-item carry-on limit, a rule that restricts passengers to one larger carry-on bag and one smaller personal item. This rule, while not new, is now being enforced more strictly across many airlines, leading to confusion and frustration among frequent travelers. The carry-on bag typically includes items like a rolling suitcase or duffel bag, while the personal item may be a smaller bag such as a backpack, purse, or laptop case. What's catching many passengers off guard is how certain airlines, like Southwest, are interpreting this rule more rigidly. For example, Southwest Airlines, known for allowing two free checked bags, is now categorizing items like cameras and blankets as personal items, which count toward the two-item limit. Despite insisting that this is merely a clarification of existing policy rather than a new restriction, the change has surprised many customers who are accustomed to more lenient interpretations. This shift towards stricter enforcement can lead to unexpected fees or even denied boarding for travelers who unknowingly exceed their allowance. If passengers are found carrying more than two items, they may be asked to consolidate their belongings or pay extra to check additional bags. This heightened scrutiny is particularly challenging for travelers who have long relied on flexible interpretations of the rule, such as those who bring multiple small items like a camera, blanket, and backpack, expecting them to be considered separately. Airlines' varying approaches to defining what constitutes a personal item only add to the confusion, making it essential for travelers to familiarize themselves with the specific carry-on rules of the airline they are flying with. Understanding these details can help avoid surprises at the boarding gate, ensure a smoother travel experience, and help prevent any additional costs or inconveniences caused by the new, more stringent enforcement practices. The second issue with the carry-on crackdown revolves around the tighter enforcement of size limits for carry-on luggage. Most U.S. airlines have standardized size restrictions for carry-on bags, typically allowing dimensions up to 22 by 14 by 9 inches, including handles and wheels, while personal items are usually limited to around 8 by 14 by 18 inches. However, enforcement of these size limits has become much stricter, with airlines now actively checking bag sizes at multiple points throughout the airport journey, from check-in counters to security checkpoints, and again, at the boarding gate. Travelers may find their bags measured in sizing bins, and if a bag exceeds the allowed dimensions, they will be required to check it in. This can result in additional fees and potentially longer wait times upon arrival, as travelers will need to collect their checked luggage from the baggage carousel. With reports of luggage theft at an all-time high, the prospect of mandatory checking can be both financially and emotionally stressful for travelers concerned about their belongings. Further complicating the situation is the inconsistency across airlines regarding these size limits, and sometimes even weight limits, for carry-on bags and personal items. While some airlines provide specific size guidelines, others are more vague, indicating only that a personal item must fit under the seat in front of the passenger. Additionally, certain budget airlines and basic economy tickets on major carriers like United are now restricting passengers to only a single personal item completely excluding a larger carry-on bag from their fare. This inconsistency not only causes confusion, but also puts passengers at risk of unexpected charges or denied boarding if they fail to adhere to these varied and often unclear policies. Travelers, therefore, need to be vigilant in checking the carry-on rules for each airline they fly with, especially if their trip involves multiple carriers with differing policies. Planning ahead by choosing bags that fit within the strictest dimensions and weights can help mitigate these risks, ensuring a smoother journey without the surprise of additional fees or complications. However, there are strategies to navigate these rules effectively and ensure you avoid any unpleasant surprises at the airport. 
The first tip is to thoroughly research the specific baggage policies of the airline operating your flight. This is crucial because many travelers mistakenly assume that the carry-on rules are the same across all airlines, only to find out at the gate that their bags do not meet the requirements. Each airline has its own set of guidelines regarding the size, weight, and even number of carry-on and personal items allowed. Additionally, if you book your flight through one airline, but it is operated by another, the rules of the operating airline will apply. For example, you might book a flight on JetBlue's website, but find that the flight is actually operated by Hawaiian Airlines, which has different size and weight limits for carry-on bags. In such cases, failing to check the operating airline's baggage policies can result in unexpected fees or even denied boarding. For trips involving multiple airlines, it is especially important to research and plan your luggage to comply with the most restrictive rules. Consider a scenario where one leg of your journey is with JetBlue and another with Hawaiian Airlines. You would need to adhere to Hawaiian's stricter rules for the entire trip to avoid any issues. This might mean selecting a carry-on bag that is no larger than 9 by 14 by 22 inches and weighs under 25 pounds, even if JetBlue has slightly more lenient policies. As for your personal item, it's best to choose a bag that meets the stricter size limits of both airlines. In this case, you would need a personal item no larger than 8 by 13 by 17 inches to comply with both airlines' maximum size requirements. By preparing your luggage according to the strictest rules, you minimize the risk of encountering problems at the airport, such as being asked to check a bag unexpectedly or paying hefty fees. Taking the time to understand the specific requirements for your flights can help you travel with confidence, knowing that you are well prepared and fully compliant with all baggage policies. The next tip is to strategically maximize your luggage allowance to get the most out of what is permitted without triggering additional fees or hassles at the boarding gate. Since airlines now strictly enforce the two-item carry-on rule, it is important to choose your bags wisely. For example, instead of opting for a small camera or blanket as a personal item, which can consume valuable allowance space, select a larger personal item bag that still fits within the airline's size limits but offers more storage capacity. One popular choice among savvy travelers is the Nomad Lane Bento Bag, which is designed to fit under the seat in front of you while holding as much as a small suitcase. This kind of bag allows you to maximize packing space for essentials like electronics, toiletries, and a change of clothes, ensuring you have everything you need during your flight and at your destination without needing to check a bag. Another clever strategy to make the most of your luggage allowance is to consider discreetly carrying a small, lightweight bag as a third item. A compact sling bag, like the Nomad Lane Tamadachi Sling, can be worn under a jacket or coat to avoid attracting attention from gate agents who might count it as an extra carry-on. While this tactic requires a bit of finesse, ensuring the bag is not overfilled or too visible, it can provide you with additional storage for small items such as travel documents, snacks, or medication. Most gate agents won't ask you to remove layers of clothing, so wearing this sling bag underneath outerwear can be a useful hack. To keep those essentials within easy reach, without exceeding the two-item limit, it's important to note, however, that if the bag is spotted, you may be asked to consolidate it into one of your other carry-on bags. Thus, using this method effectively depends on careful packing and a bit of discretion, helping you maximize your baggage capacity without breaking the rules. Before we move on, I want to take a moment to express my gratitude. If you're new to our channel, please subscribe and click the bell to be notified of our latest travel tips and share this information with your friends and family, and don't forget to join our free newsletter and become a friend of Park and Post. By signing up, you'll receive exclusive offers and updates. Click the link below to join our newsletter and start enjoying the benefits today. But let's get back to the topic. New carry-on rules airlines don't want you to know. Another tip to optimize your carry-on allowance is to use a smaller, discreet bag such as the Nomad Lane Tamadachi Sling, as an unofficial third carry-on. This bag is compact enough to be worn subtly under a jacket or coat, allowing you to carry a few extra essentials without drawing attention from gate agents who might enforce the two-item limit. The Tamadachi Sling is perfect for items like your phone, 
wallet, passport, boarding pass, or even a few snacks and medications that you want easy access to during the flight. Because the bag is small and lightweight, it can often go unnoticed by gate staff, especially if it is worn close to your body and concealed under your outerwear. This approach allows you to keep critical items within reach without having to dig through a larger carry-on or personal item during your flight. However, it's important to remember that if the bag is visible, a gate agent may consider it a third carry-on item and ask you to consolidate it with your other luggage. This is why discretion is key when using this tactic. Keep the bag underfilled so that it remains low profile and doesn't protrude or create noticeable bulk under your clothing. Also, avoid drawing attention to it by constantly adjusting or fiddling with the bag. While this strategy can be a clever way to carry extra items without officially exceeding the carry-on limit, it requires some finesse and awareness. Be prepared to quickly place the sling bag inside your larger carry-on or personal item if you're asked to do so. By employing this method carefully, you can effectively increase your carrying capacity while staying within the rules, or at least in a gray area that won't typically result in penalties or fees. Tip number three is to consider gate checking your carry-on suitcase, a strategy that offers a convenient alternative to traditional checked baggage. Unlike regular checked bags that need to be picked up from the baggage carousel after landing, Gate-checked items are collected right at the plane's exit, usually on the jetway or loading bridge. This can save significant time and hassle, particularly if you are in a hurry or have a tight connection. Gate-checking allows you to avoid the stress of fighting for overhead bin space, especially during crowded flights when overhead compartments fill up quickly. By volunteering to gate-check your suitcase, you can board the plane more comfortably, knowing that your bag will be safely stowed by the airline staff and waiting for you immediately upon deplaning. Gate checking is also a useful strategy if you find yourself carrying more than the allowed two items, such as a suitcase, a personal item, and a small sling bag. By gate checking your suitcase, you automatically reduce your carry-ons to just two items, the personal bag and the sling. This tactic can help you avoid conflicts with gate agents over excess luggage, ensuring a smoother boarding experience. Just because gate-checked items do not pass through the same extensive handling process as regular checked baggage, they are less likely to be lost or delayed. Gate-checking can also minimize your exposure to the higher theft risks associated with checked baggage as your suitcase remains closer to you throughout your journey. Listening for announcements inviting passengers to gate-check their luggage, often made about an hour before boarding, can help you take advantage of this option whenever it is available providing a smart and flexible way to manage your carry-ons without additional fees or complications. Understanding the carry-on rules of your airline, making the most of your baggage allowance, and staying informed about enforcement practices will help you avoid fees and inconveniences. Don't forget to subscribe for more travel tips each week and check out our next video on ways to prevent luggage theft from airport and airline employees. Safe travels and see you in the next video.